for work. I'm gonna walk in the new. Oh, look at the city I'm walking in. Oh my god, look at the office. Oh, look at the background in the office. Oh, I have so much work to do on my big monitor. Don't be like that. Just. Just don't. Just. Okay? Trust me. Stop. That's not. So, remember the kittens project with having one kitten for each subscriber on my screen? And remember how it was heavy for my computer to run it? Well, I have, I have an idea. I have this projector that I'm not really using and I'm thinking about installing it up there, putting all the kittens on my wall. And I have two laptops here that are not doing anything. Just getting dusty in the corner of my room. I can use one to run the kittens program on and we can have a kitten for each subscriber on my wall. Damn, it's gonna be so cool. I need equipment to mount it on the wall. I need a long HDMI cable. That's $75. I'm gonna leave that in my cart until I get my next paycheck. So we're gonna drop that project for now until I get my next paycheck. In the meantime, we're gonna go back to... Okay, so now that we have a... Now that we have a UART connection to our FPGA, it is time to write an assembler. And since we're using RISC V, we need to first learn assembly for RISC V and then write an assembler in Python for RISC V. This is going to take us probably a week. And then we're going to spend two weeks writing a RISC V, RISC V computer in very long. They can be. They can be run on this and then using the assembler we write assembly language and then we will turn it into zeros and ones, load it into our RISC-V computer and we'll do shit. I found an online interpreter so we can put zeros and ones assembly code in here and then it'll be run and we can like test stuff. There's the memory, there's the instruction set and we can like test stuff, see how the assembly language in RISC-V actually works. And there's a bunch of other uh, tutorial websites and a book here. And then I've got slides from actually from Berkeley. These are the creators of RISC-V so we can learn from them. And in the end, we have this, which is an assembler and runtime simulator in Python. So we're gonna attempt to kind of copy that and like write an assembler in Python. That's gonna be the task for this week. Okay, I finished the slides from Berkeley and I took notes here. Um, if you're interested, this is like the entire risk v and how it works. Basically, there are a few more instructions, but this is basically risk v or risk v. So if you know this, you know risk v. So let's. Okay, I found this quick sort algorithm here. Uh, I'm just gonna run it for you and then I'm gonna study it and see what happens in a year. But I'm not gonna film that for now. And you can see that it's 10A, 30, 90, 40, 50, 70, right? So, there we go, it's running. Also see that it's sorting things. So now it's 10, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 90. And it's all sorted out. And in Python, it's it's like 20, 30 lines. But in Risk V, in assembly language, it's 125 lines. That's gonna be it for today. I'm gonna study this quote and I'm gonna go to bed. But tomorrow we're gonna start actually writing the assembly. The thing is that the instruction set is so small. Look at that. Those are the all the instructions that we need to know. And that's why you pick risk five when you're coding an entire computer. And 
and when you actually support those instructions there's like compilers and there is linux that you can run on risk 5 and we just need to write that risk 5 in very log and we can run linux on it on this thing isn't that exciting tune in and follow for more see you tomorrow